Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. As usually, my favorite theorems, very, very biased point of view. Well, just my favorite theorems, right? Um, today, a classic, well, in some sense, a classic, so the art gallery theorem. It's not as classic as you would think it is because it's graph theory in the end. And graph theory is not, well, is not one of the oldest fields in mathematics. So the real study of graph theory, let's say at the theory goes back to the 50s or 60s of the last century, which is still about 80 years ago or so. Um, but compared to something like calculus, of course, it's just, or geometry, I mean, what are 80 years, right? Anyway, so this is one of, or was one of the first uh, very nice and kind of a little bit of fun theorems in graph theory. Um, so as far as I'm aware, this doesn't have any real applications in some sense, but it's a fun question that has a fun answer. And why another reason why it is so popular is because you can formulate it in a very nice way. So in some sense, the question is how many cameras suffice. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. So um, think of it as the following problem. So you have a museum and what is a museum? A museum is some kind of a polygon. So like this kind of thing here, right? So it has some whatever, some, some polygon, whatever, whatever you can draw. Something like that. That was a really bad polygon, but anyway. Um, so some some set, uh, some subset of R2 with some reasonable conditions, a polygon. So this was not really a polygon because I wanted to, to have some vertices here. But anyway, you get the point. So here's a polygon and this one would be a polygon. Uh, six gun or a square is a polygon. These are very boring polygons. You can have different things of polygons like a star shape, polygon, whatever. And that polygon is your museum. And you want to, you, your museum to be well guarded by cameras. So you're allowed to put some cameras somewhere and the cameras would basically want, would like to cover a, a square radius, but they can't quite because you have walls, right? The, the borders of the, um, of the um, polygon, and th then you would just shoot from from your from your uh, chosen fixed point. You shoot rays in any direction, and if they hit a wall, they die, and otherwise they just continue. Like eh, if I have chosen my camera to be here, um, it can turn all the way around. So you really shoot rays in all directions. But for example, I can't look here because I can't draw a straight line uh, from my camera to that. Right, so I have a fixed polygon, I have a fixed number of points, or a varying number of points, depends a bit how you want to formulate the question, and those are my cameras, and they kind of shoot rays in all directions, and you want to be, um, the whole polygon to be covered. So this is a non-example, uh, but let's have, have a look at Mathematica, such that we, we are all on the same page. It's a very nice demonstration, linked in the description below. So here's Mathematica, and it's basically the same picture as you have seen on my slide. But now I can move this point, right? For example, if I put the point right here, I can cover a pretty small area. If I put it right at the vertex, oops, if I put it right at the vertex, I only cover this whatever rectangular shape here. And it, it's pretty clear that no matter what you do, you one cam camera for this museum won't be sufficient. But maybe two cameras are. And now we can try to put them somewhere such that the two cameras will cover everything. Um, I will show you the solution in a second, but you can think of how many cameras you actually need for this museum. So two also won't do. And yeah, whatever. So the demonstration is linked in the description. It's very nice. You can also uh, change this shape. You can have a look at this shape, for example. And it's always a very good idea, for example, to put it, let's say here. And then you could put it here. And in this case, you see, oh, two, two cameras actually do suffice. Right? I, I cover everything. Uh, some areas are, are, are covered by both cameras, but that, that's not the question here. I only want to cover everything um, by at least one camera. Right? So um, a, a camera covering museum type of question. And the, basically, the question is, what is the minimal numbers of cameras needed? Sounds like a very innocent question. And what you would like to get is kind of an answer depending on, on some easy parameter. So if you would get an answer depending on the polygon, that's not a really nice answer in some sense, because of course it depends on the polygon. Um, maybe you get a better answer, like um, here's a good example. So for those, for a hexagon, I, of course one camera suffices. 
uh, this was a square. For a hexagon, also one camera suffices. And actually for all convex polygons, one camera suffice. So the whole class of convex polygons is covered by one camera. Okay, that's already not too bad. But of course, for some non-convex thing like, like this one here in the middle, certainly one camera won't be sufficient. And maybe you can get a criterion that doesn't really depend on the polygon, but some kind of an easy property that you can read off from the polygon. And then you can still say, okay, this is the number of uh, cameras that would suffice uh, for my given polygon. And I, I really don't care whether this number is optimal. Okay, so I will show you some examples later on where this number is certainly not optimal. That's a number in the theorem. Um, I'm, I only want a number that works for any polygon. So kind of a very easy question. Um, and it's not so hard to get actually a good idea what this number is supposed to be. So if you think of this museum, this uh, whatever you want to call it, I have no idea what to call it actually. Um, it has a lot of triangles and let's say M of them. Um, and then it looks like this. And in order to cover it, you certainly need to cover all of those areas here. So what you need to do is you need to place kind of kind of a, a, a guard somewhere to guard those um, those corners. So you can place it here, for example. Here, my first guard. Here, another one. Here, another one. Here, another one. And then all uh, corners would be covered. For example, but that's um, uh, not well. This is this is actually the optimal way of doing it in this case. So uh, let's count. So yes, here comes a nice counting. So I count, and that would be the number um, that gives me the, the bound. I count the number of uh, corners, uh, uh, the number of edges that I see in my, um, in my polygon. So one, two, three. And if you continue, there's always one, two, three, one, two, three, so boom, boom. So the number of, cor of, of those edges is actually three times m. This is not so hard to see. Always one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three for all um, of those triangle shapes. The last one is a bit tricky because it's one, two, and you want to go to the side, but this one goes this way. It's, but it's still one, two, three. So um, the number of corners here is uh, 3m. Uh, and you certainly need to put, it's also not so hard to see that the only way you need to cover all of those uh, corner points so uh, the minimal number of cameras you really need would be M, in other words, N over three. So what you just came up with is a lower bound um, depending on the number of edges of your polygon. And that's maybe not a too bad number you want to look at, edges of the polygon. I mean, um, it's better than, definitely than to get a function in the polygon. The edges of the polygon is something you can easily count. And if you decide to do it on the edges of the polygon, you, you see that n over three is kind of the best you can do. Um, and because you only want an integral number of, of um, cameras, you just round it down. So you basically can ignore the symbol. It's a floor function. Uh, so it's basically n over three, but n over three might not be an integer. So if n over three happens to be whatever, 3.3, .3, whatever, uh, you just round it down to three. So it's always rounding down. Right, so 12 over three is of course four uh, and rounded down, nothing changes, but 13 over three is bigger than four, but rounded down, it's still four. Okay, so this is just the notation. Anyway, so basically ignore it, it's, it's three, N over three. And this example of this funny shape here shows that if you, I said again, if you want to have a function in the number of edges, then this is, this is kind of as good as it gets. Um, at least for this shape. Um, you certainly can do better. So uh, coming back to my previous example, uh, actually four cameras would suffice. Uh, you could place them at those points and the color code here is as follows. So green covers green, of course, red covers red, blue colors blue, uh, covers blue. So red covers red, green covers green. And at intersections they cover, the, the intersections are covered by the corresponding colors. So um, yellow, I think, would be the intersection of blue and green, uh, of red and green. So this would be, the so green certainly covers it, and red certainly covers it, but blue can't see it. White is the intersection of all of them. So this is how this picture is 
works, right? So just look at the colors of the areas and the, then you know what, what camera would cover it. But in particular, the whole shape is covered by four cameras. Um, you can convince yourself of this shape that you can't do any better, but it's, it's certainly way off from our guest bound because uh, stop the video, count the number of, of edges here. I hope I didn't miscount, it should be 35 and uh, 35 over, over three is 11, right? Rounded down, here comes this rounded down. So this, this bound is pretty huge for a lot of polygons. Here's another example. Um, from a hexagon or no matter what kind of n gun I choose, of course, n is just n for the n gun, but always one camera is sufficient because it's convex. But that's not the question. That's not the question I'm interested in. I, I would like to have a number that works for any, for absolutely any polygon. It might be a complete, complete um, overshoot for some polygons, but I want it to work for any polygon. Turns out that this easy example is kind of the prototypical example. And yes, uh, n over three numbers, uh, n over three cameras suffice. Um, I already, but you can do better, right? I, I showed you this example where two cameras suffice. And again, um, our bound would, would say three definitely suffice, but we can do better, but that's not the question. So you always know, and this is a really nice theorem if you think about it, it's a very easy, just count the number of edges of your polygon and you know that a certain number of cameras will suffice. And this was one of the first theorems in graph theory. So I, I told you, so links to the original papers are in the description, as well as I should have said this way earlier, uh, a link to the, to the book where I stole this from, uh, so proofs from the book, but uh, the, um, the proofs are based on, on a result by Fisk. A, quite a while ago. But still, this is pretty young in the sense of graph theory because graph theory roughly started in the 60s. So these were one of the first results in graph theory. And compared to results, other results in geometry, whatever, this is just ridiculously young anyway. And the point is not so much in this case, okay, you have a nice theorem and it's, it's nice, nice to explain. It's this uh, art gallery theorem. Uh, there are a lot of videos and blogs and whatever about the art gallery problem because it is so easy to explain, right? Um, the answer isn't all that surprising in my opinion, uh, because, well, you usually definitely overshoot quite a lot. What I think is pretty nice is actually the proof. Um, and I will sketch now how that works. So uh, let me say it again. You have this result, which is kind of easy to explain. You have lots of videos about it because it is so easy to explain. It's one of the classic theorems um, in more popular mathematics. In the end, it isn't all that surprising. I mean, it, it's not all that great, right? Um, okay, n over three, you usually totally overshoot, um, but the proof is pretty awesome or pretty nice. Uh, and I have one slide, so let's just get, get it done. So it uses graph theory. I told you all the time, this was one of the first theorems in graph theory. You might wonder where is actually graph theory turning up here? Uh, it works as follows. It's, a, it, it's a pretty easy. So if you pause the video, look at the different steps and then you can try to write it down yourself. That's how easy it is. It's not completely obvious. Not, I am not saying those steps are completely obvious, but it's, it's also not so hard. So you start with your museum and you realize that you can, um, you can triangulate it. That's not quite obvious, but it's not so hard to see. By triangulate, I mean, you have a vertex uh, for each of the uh, vertices, you put a one vertex for each of the vertices, and of course one edge for each of the corner edges, and then you can re can find a refinement by putting some uh, some more edges here in the middle, like like this one, and uh, this one, and so on. So here's a picture, of course, such that uh, all areas you see are, are triangles. So it's a triangulation of your of your problem. As I said, that's not completely obvious, but it's also not so hard to see. Um, so let's say this is easy. And then there's another not obvious, but relatively easy step. Um, so basically you can see that because this is triangulated in some nice way and you always have triangles, three, a three coloring of this uh, graph is, is, well, always exists. And by a three coloring, I just mean um, whenever two vertices are adjacent, they should get a different color. So my colors here upstairs are uh, red, green, and blue. And of course, because you have triangles, you certainly need three colors. 
So each triangle should get three different colors, but you don't need any other color, which is not completely obvious, but it's also not so hard to see. Actually, there's an algorithm uh, of doing it. Um, so try to just three colors this graph and you might guess actually how the algorithm works. Again, a very, very, not very hard argument. I don't, shouldn't say very easy, but not very hard argument. The whole point here is this brilliance how to put things together. Um, so going from, uh, from a museum to a tricoloring of the museum. And then you're basically done. And this is how it works. Um, so at least one of the colors uh, contains at most vertices. That's how it works because it's a three coloring. Okay, so just pick that one and put a camera and all of the positions. So here's how it works. So in this example, it's kind of silly because I have 12 and 12 over three. So all of them would work. So I've just chosen, um, so in general, there will only be one color and you just pick that one. Here, all colors would work because everything has four, ver four, four vertices. So there are four red vertices, four blue vertices and four green vertices. And I've decided to choose the red one. So what you do now is here, you put a camera at all the red positions and you're sure by just this counting argument that you never put more than this number of cameras. And now you have to try coloring and you can say, okay, every triangle is now, because every triangle has one of them, is now covered by at least one camera, right? So this camera here, it's illustrated down here, covers this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle. It covers more, okay? Surely it covers more, but you don't care. You only want to have one camera per triangle. And all these triangles are adjacent to my camera, so they are covered by this camera, right? So I illustrated here. So this is a red illustration down here. Maybe I should go to this one. The camera here in, in the corner covers this one and this one, the adjacent ones. Uh, the blue one down here covers this one and this one, and the yellow one up here uh, colors is the adjacent thing because it's it's this is the only as maybe I said again this is the only triangle that contains this camera. Of course, this camera also sees this, 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 and many more. But it doesn't matter you because again you only want for every triangle you want one camera, and you're done, right? Just think about it again. Let, let me say it again. Uh, you just placed. Uh, a camera at, at, at a vertex of a certain color. And by coloring, you know that every triangle is now co contains one of those vertices. So every triangle is covered because it's really just neighboring. Um, and that's a proof. I mean, and I think that is really, really nice. I said again, the, the result might not be so stunning, but the idea how to prove it to just go from uh, a polygon to a tricoloring and then you're done. It's actually pretty brilliant. Okay, so let me wrap up. So we have this art gallery theorem, which um, is just very easy to explain. It's a classic of popular mathematics. So that n over three uh, cameras suffice. Well, floor function n over three, whatever. Um, and the main need for me at least is the proof. The proof is one of these brilliant ideas to uh, convert, let's say uh, uh, a problem in real life, whatever that means, uh, into a problem in graph theory and, and use ideas from graph theory to solve that problem. And I think that is pretty amazing and deserved an own video. Uh, in any case, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.